uh, 60 geologic professionals uh, studying a wide variety of geologic issues, earthquakes, landslides, limestone, coal, oil and gas, uh, water, caves and cars. And we have my group doing the geologic now. Um, Kentucky's very lucky because we are done. Geological Survey, and they map the entire state at a scale of 1 to 24,000. Uh, if you're familiar with those rectangle maps, quadrangle maps that have the green, and yellow, the green and white, and the brown lines of topography on standard topographic map, well, every one of those in Kentucky has a geologic map. Okay? No other state bigger than Rhode Island has a complete published geologic map. So we're way ahead of the game. So we can be ahead of the mapping section when you've got that behind you. So one, some people say, I've got is we're still mapping, so the hardest job is to convince people that you still need to map and you're not done. Um, and that's what we're doing. Most of those maps that we did between 1960 and 78 focused on the bedrock layers. And a lot of what we're going to talk about today is focusing on rock layers uh, here in Kentucky. What we're going back and doing right now is we're mapping what we call surficial geology, turner geology, and it's the unconsolidated sediments and soils. So whatever's between your shoelaces and the top of the rock. Soil over most of the state, but in some other places, especially down in river valleys, we get uh, river sediments and terraces and lake deposits and sometimes sand dunes. In some parts of the state, we get a blanket of lust, which is a little wind blown silt. And so we get quite a wide variety of things on about the bedrock here in the state. And that does kind of make sense because when you drive around, you don't see rock everywhere you go. Most of the time, you see grass and trees and soil. And so we're trying to sort out. Soil maps. Every county has a soil map, but we're sorting out the deeper variations of what's under that first layer of soil, or what is between you and rock, like I said. Um, one of my past activities is I made a physiographic map of the state. Uh, my dissertation was looking at the landscape evolution of the Palisades area here in central Kentucky, and so some of the things I've learned from that kind of go into what we're going to be talking about. Some of the regionalizations of the state and the characterization of those regions and how that applies to whatever you might be interested in. And in this case, I understand it's watersheds. So my slides aren't specifically outlining watersheds or showing you pictures of rivers and streams. It's going to be more about the rocks and the characteristics of the regions. And then we'll talk a little bit about how those regions might have some impact on the water that's flowing through. So any questions before we start rolling? Feel free to throw a hand up at any point. It doesn't have to be very formal, it doesn't have to be whatever. I'm going to roll on like I've practiced this before, and I haven't really, so uh, <laughs> just feel free to jump in. They've, they've got a remote up there someplace, Drew. There's a little clicker if you want to not have to walk back to the computer all the time. Yeah, the right hand button, I think, like a right hand arrow will take you. There you go. And it's got a laser pointer. You press the middle. The middle button. Uh, yeah. Ding. Okay. So uh, there you go. Now you're equipped. So if you've traveled any, you know that there are different landscapes all over the country. Different parts of the country look different. You can, if you're very careful and systematic, you can outline different parts of the country that seem to have the same kinds of topography. Uh, that's been done. It's actually done back in the 30s. It's quite the science at the time. Kentucky can be the same way. I'm going to show you a whole series of maps here really quick, okay? What I want you to kind of do is kind of blur and look at the pattern of the map, okay? So we've got, this is the map I did of landform regions. We've got a soil map. We have a pattern of land use in Kentucky. We have eco-regions. That was a neat map to work on. We got to be a co-author with some biologists and some plant people and soil people and a whole variety of is that? Well, as the geologist, I would argue that's because it all comes back to the rocks. The rocks influence the soil, influence the landscape, influence, and so it all comes back to what the, the underlying architecture. The 
geology is a unique science. It is, I argue, as important, but somewhat derivative from physics, chemistry, biology. They're, I guess, more original, more pure sciences. Geology draws from elements of all of them. Next talk, <laughs> or I can talk to you talk to you about um, glacial lakes that formed during the ice age when the streams got blocked by sediment in the river. I go, okay, how's that happen? But you have to pick a, a different picture of what I'm talking about. And so, a lot of the people that need to use geology or do use geology use a different vocabulary than I do. And a lot of what I do is trying to reach out to people in geotechnical fields, work in landforms, hydrology hazards, soils, learn their language, learn the vocabulary of how they apply geology, and turn around and try to communicate to them in their vocabulary so they'll actually use my maps. Um, we get a lot of funding to make these maps because my tax dollars and I want to see that investment in geology. And as we start thinking about it, well, then we start getting into transportation, engineering, construction, agriculture, yeah, ecology, land use. Very important things. These start to become very, very important elements when we're talking about politics, economics, history, society, and culture. And so the geology sits kind of nested in the middle of this, this web of very important uh, considerations. So I understand most of you are from the Bluegrass. Fayette, Henry, Grant, Jessamine, here in Central Kentucky. You know you're dealing with gently rolling topography. A little further out toward Henry County, I guess that too. I'm sure. Um, things get a little more steep. You know, slightly bigger hills, um, not as much flat ground, mainly down in the, in the uh, creek bobs that you get some flat ground. I grew up in the same kind of topography in Henry County. So, um, but basically, you're dealing with the same kind of rocks, limestone and shale. And the difference in the topography between here and in Henry County is the amount of shale that you get. You start heading east, south, or southwest from here, going down the Bluegrass Parkway, or over by the Lowell Airport, down past Stanford, or out east toward Moorhead, you hit the knobs, very distinctive. Um, you'll see those as you go. I mean, you can't miss them. They get the conical hills rising a couple hundred feet above the road, and all of a sudden, you go through a couple of road cuts, and the topography changes again. So it's this very narrow belt of these conical hills. And then, if you're going east, you end up in the eastern Kentucky coal field. If you're going south, you end up in the Mississippian plateaus. And eventually, you could end up going southwest in the western Kentucky coal field. Uh, again, there's another escarpment. Uh, as you're getting near uh, Candyville, um, if you're going down the western Kentucky Parkway, or if you're near, um, going along I-65 near Munkerville, again, you see another set of knobs, another ridge rising up next to the road, and that's the edge of the western if you get out past the Twin Lakes, out past Lane Twin Lakes, uh, by our standards, it goes fairly flat. And it's still kind of nice compared to this Texas parts of Arkansas. <laughs> but um, it's relatively flat. I mean, it's, you're actually in part of the Gulf Coastal Plain. You get all the way down to the Mississippi Bay. Each of these different areas has a distinctive age and type of rock. Um, and those rocks come apart in certain ways when you leave them sitting out under the weather. So as these rocks come apart under the effects of wind and water, they make distinctive landforms. So if we're looking at Kentucky, we are near the intersection of these two lines. We're here in Fayette County. And what we end up with is the bluegrass region. It's this sort of everything between Cincinnati, Louisville, Winchester, um, like that big circular set of counties there. That is the bluegrass. In general, they're the oldest rocks 
exposed to the surface of the detected air or to vision in age, uh, four million plus a million years old. Uh, mainly limestone, different amounts of shape and extent. When you get to this horseshoe shaped area around it, you're starting to pick up Silurian. Close to those mountains are also coming up, kind of being dragged up a little bit as well. And so eastern Kentucky is uplifting a little faster than western Kentucky. And that's not saying you might be tossed up in the air or dragged into the river there or anything like that. But it is uplifting. <coughs> Yeah. region, which is home for most everybody here, I think. I'm going to talk about the knobs, because it's something that's very distinct to understand you know, going out to Natural Bridge tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh-huh, okay. yeah. So on your way to Natural Bridge, you're going to see the knobs. At mile marker 10, okay, you're going past the Rocky Mountain, of course, maybe they're building a new interchange right there at mile marker 10. Mm -hmm. You are moments from going into the knobs, and for a couple miles before that, you're going to see them. Yeah. Look, the knobs. And you're going to drive into the knobs. By the time you're at Clay City, you're officially kind of through that. You'll still see a few isolated knobs, maybe as far as standing. Um, by the time you get to the Slade exit, turn off there, you're on the edge of Eastern Kentucky. If you were miss the Slade exit, you would go up the big hill, and you're up on top of the sandstone from then on, and you're in the coal field after that. Okay. So basically, from Clay City, I guess, to the Slade exit, A little bit about Eastern Kentucky just because it's generally where you are and it contrasts significantly with the blueberries. So you have a, an idea of some of the difference. So let me know the appreciate that you have until you see what somebody else has and you can compare yeah, what is the same and what's not. Here in the bluegrass, like I said, it's mainly limestone. We have uh, thin bedded limestone. 
limestones for the most part. We have some thick limestones down in the Palisades along the Kentucky River. Um, they only really affect the landscape there in the Palisades, so I'm not going to talk about them too much today. We'll talk about some of the others. There's a little bit of shale. It's calcareous shale. Um, what that means is actually a lot of the shale, which we would normally expect to be just clay, sometimes the shales that we have in the bluegrass are 70% calcite. <laughs> so, uh, holes in your clothes. Several holes in my, in my tool belts. And a couple of pairs of pants started coming apart right here. And now I just take my hammer. Uh, you may remember in the Geology 101 class you had a year or two ago that <laughs> they had a scratch test with the Mohs hardness. It was just called Geology 101. <laughs> Scratch on the metal. 